Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Elkanen. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Thick. I've been the penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Wednesday edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Spencer Israel, as always, here with Joel Conan and Dennis Dick. Good to be back with you folks this morning. I missed you guys over this long weekend, and apparently I missed a lot because I come in this morning and uh, we're talking about these pod stock valuations. Again, I'm talking about uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Google having to testify today in front of Congress. Uh, so we have a lot to get to. Uh, we are going to be joined by Alan Broxton at 835 today to uh, kind of talk us through some of these valuations in the cannabis sector today. Joel, what happened in the overnight session, though? Get us uh, off you, though. He's getting old. He's, uh, He's getting old, Spencer. Uh, hey, He's I, getting I, I, old. You got to give him a break. You know, I don't know what it feels like to be 80 years old. So <laughs> I, I don't know. Like it, it's it's hard. So when you're 80 years old, you know, yeah, your I, hearing I starts know. to go on, your vision starts to go on. This you know, is so. this guy. Oh, I'm it's this guy. You. Okay, okay, I'm okay. So you got to okay. give him a break. Okay. It's this new Skype. It's this new Skype, man. Short, I'm short, telling you. Short Microsoft. All right. It's a new Skype. I can't. It happened. Nothing to do with the eighty-year-old. Short short Microsoft. All right. Yeah, I got a little while. Let's uh, let's go on this again. So, what are the spoons doing this morning, Joel? (laughs) Okay. Uh, (laughs) Not ready yet. (laughs) Okay, cut, Joel. Give him a break. Give him a break. Give him a break. The spoons are down seven points in ninety-one and a quarter. Now he's lost. Now he's lost. So so weak. Very weak. Twenty-nine hundred. That's the biggest number. Uh, Dennis, I'll give you a uh, a ten point. Uh, now it'd be a ten point edge for me. I'll go uh, twenty eight hundred, and I'll give you twenty nine eighty if you want to do that for three steak dinners, three lunches, three cars, and my house. Well, three cars is betting cars now. <laughs> you got slips. We're talking slips. <laughs> okay, you got a vote slip. Okay, uh, crude <laughs> crude had a, a weak close. Uh, continued follow through on the downside. Uh, down 87 cents at 69 even. Gold uh, just hanging here at 1200. Sell the puts and calls there. That's not investment advice. Uh, silver flat at 1418. But before we go into the show, I was bragging about the Sleepy Bear Dune, Spencer. Just tell people a little bit about Northern Michigan and you think you're in the Sahara Desert. <laughs> yeah, I, I did I think I was in the desert for real. So, yes, I was uh, here. I'll, I'll make myself a little bigger on the screen there so you guys can see me a little bit there. Um, no, I was up North Michigan. Uh, we, we we went on this hike, a couple of, I guess, what was it now, Sunday? And uh, whew, let me tell you, th- this dune hike was, was a lot, man. It was a lot. Uh, I, I was regretting my breakfast, put it that way. I was regretting eating breakfast about – 15 minutes into into, into this three hour hike and um, you're in good shape now spencer no no no, those, no, no, those no hills no. were getting you oh oh yeah they were getting me it's just nine or ten just steep steep hills and uh, and sand it's sand. not nothing it's but sand, sand right nothing but sand just sand and some little bit of like grass on the sides but sand and sand and more sand and uh, no shade and holy cow. But it was great. It was great. It, Joel, you're right. Northern Michigan is beautiful. When I'm like Michigan for the first time, lovely, lovely area. Okay. And how far, how many miles was the hike? Uh, it, I think it's like a little over three miles. It's a three okay. mile hike. It, and it took us three hours <laughs> to go there and it's back. It's straight off. I'm telling you, yeah. it's, a, it's a difficult hike. Yeah. But uh, all right, let's, uh, whew, Dennis, where do you want to start? I mean, I oh, guess. I guess start with pot stocks. Okay. I mean, I these things it. are just in monster mode here. And I'll tell you again, this stuff is hard to trade. Um, you you're, you know, there's going to be a lot of people in the saying, well, what do you mean? You just buy it and you hold on to it for a few days and you make 50% of your money. Yeah, but the psychology behind all that, the movement behind all these things, I mean, there is some downdrafts in there too. And it's been pretty much straight up here overnight for a lot of these things. And actually, I was talking with Soho. We were just talking in the chat last night. And I do trade these things. I like to trade them after hours because they don't have as much chop with them. 
it seems like intraday when you're trying to trade these things that they're just all over the place. I mean, even on Tilray yesterday, just look at the intraday chart. Stock goes up all the way up uh, around the 11 o'clock hour up to $77 and then pulls back an hour later to 70 That's just a tidy 10% fall there. It doesn't look like nothing on the chart. That's 10% fall. I mean, that's hard to take. Two hours later, it's back up to 77. Now we look at it and it's at 85. So there is some wicked little shakeouts, even in this relentless uptrend here on these stocks. Where they stop, nobody knows. This is a game of hot potato here now. I mean, from a valuation perspective, none of this makes sense, but it doesn't matter. What's hot is hot. What's not is not. These things are hot right now. Now, it is a game of hot potato. So do not get caught holding these things when the music stops. It's a fun party when the music's going. But whoever gets caught when the music stops is going to lose a lot of money. So just be careful when you're trading these things and uh, just know that you can lose 20% on these things in a matter of 20 minutes. So you can make 30, 40% or 50% quickly as well. So I, I would suggest, you know, if you're new to these things, trading it, try them in smaller size because you can lose 20% of your money very quickly or more. All right, I'm just going to give you guys the pre-market highs in this stuff, and they're right near the highs of the pre-market session. Uh, 85.95 is your pre-market high, but uh, you backed off a buck. Maybe you have a seller at 86. Uh, Cron, who? I hope uh, Mr. Laugh covered your short here because that would create nothing but a buying opportunity for people. It was. Yeah, that is blowing away its former old-time high. That was 12.89. Your pre-market high is 1420 that's just a bubble hole number so use 14 is your number um and that one and then cgc i wonder how much their investment uh uh, uh constellations brand is his investment is worth of that uh that found a little seller here just around 57 57 is your pre-market high and i'm just curious let's just take a look at stz Hey, it's got off the mat after that, Dennis. Did you see that? That and that's starting to get off the mat. I mean, they got a big investment. The stock's going straight up, so eventually, you got to think that's going to probably help them a bit. I mean, everybody laughed at it when they put that much money into it, but right now they're kind of laughing here because they're in a lot lower. And here you got CGC now trading at fifty-five dollars in the pre-market again. You know, stock goes from twenty-five to fifty-five in two weeks. What do I do if I'm in? I ring the register. Um, I, and I, we know how this story ends. The story is going to end ugly, but we don't know when the story ends and these things could continue to run. So, I mean, trade them and ride the momentum while you can. But again, I'm just going to say, don't get caught when the music stops. Okay. All right. We'll go on to pod stocks a little bit later here. 835. We've got Alan Brockstein coming in. 420. Yeah, we'll right in with, yeah with he'll Alan be better. Here. Uh, real quick for uh, RD's asking about uh, match.com and a uh, huge short float. He's looking for as yeah. well. It already looks like a short squeeze. You know, remember when that thing got uh, tar and feathered on um, who was Facebook it? Facebook? News. Yeah. Facebook, Facebook was going to do a date. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's just back. It just, that was nothing but a buying opportunity. And I bet you IAC, that's uh, Barry Diller. Uh, his company's right back. And I, and I think I said this before, if you go back and you look at Barry Dillard's performance, I think it's better than uh, Warren over uh, over a long period of time. So, um, you know, no stop in those stocks. Just keep an eye on your pre-market uh, highs and, or pre-market highs to see if they're shorts, but they are dead. I'm not, I'm sure that short interest is coming down uh, with- um, Well, maybe not. Sometimes they try to, those shorts get stubborn. I was dead wrong on this one. Um, and I was saying it when it had that, I don't know what it was when it went from 38 to 45, it was earnings or what it was that day, that gap up. And I thought it would slow down and, and fail potentially at the $47 level. And it has not. It's been the gap and go. And it just goes to show you again, what's strong is strong, what's hot is hot, what's not is not. And it seems like the strong gets stronger and the weak get weaker. I mean, you know, you look at AMD and that goes up. You were saying, is this upgraded today? It's trading up 4%. I don't even think there was anything on AMD. I never saw an analyst change. Was there anything you saw, Spencer? Analyst commentary or rating change there? No, not this morning, no. It's just up 4% for fun. I mean, this is the way these things go. And this is one of the worst trades I've ever had. In, in, uh, and I said it on the show that I was liking. Somebody asked me two weeks ago, when this is a 1950. You did. They asked me, it was a 1950. And I said, I think this thing's going to break out and make new highs. And I bought it that day. And I sold it that day. And, that, and I should have stuck it. And I was a swing trading call. And scalper blood in me sold it that day. Awful, awful, awful sale. Because here we are two weeks later, and the thing is up about 30%. Since I said on the show that I liked it and I thought it was breaking out. 
So sometimes you just got to stick it in a portfolio. We can't trade it. The day trading portfolio is sitting in front of me. If I put something in there and isolate it, say, I'm going to hold on to this one a bit, I never hold. So you got to stick it over in another account where you're not looking at it. Just know you have it and stick it over there so you can hold it better. So the psychology of the trade doesn't you know, tr trade you out of it. Because if it's sitting in front of me and it's so easy to trade on my platform, I mean, it can be out in one second um, and with, with so much ease. And especially with as liquid as AMD is. It shakes you, it, it takes you out of it. I mean, especially when you say stock go up very quickly, fast. I mean, this looked like it was a good sale, 22, 24. I mean, these are big moves for the stock. Well, it's in full parabolic mode now. You know, I think it's going to probably touch 30. You know, you went all the way up here to 29. <laughs> I feel like it's going to go like 30, 20, hit some stops up there, maybe from some and people who are short. And I don't know where, again, it's hard, impossible to call the tops on these things, but it's not even about, you know, the companies right now. It's all about momentum. It's all about what's hot is hot. AMD is one of the hottest stocks out there. It will get cold. It will have a 20% fall here one day. So again, this is another story of hot potato here now. It's overdone. It's a matter of where the music stops. But I guess you keep riding it. And, and just I would be, you know, bringing up my stops. You know, I know you talk about yeah. stops all the time. So maybe keep riding that trend until the trend breaks. Maybe you give yourself a 10% leeway. I'm not sure how much you give yourself when a stock goes up 30% here in a week and a half. But Man, it's been an incredible move here for AMD. I tried uh, that little consolidation period right there when you had that you had that uh, blow off. I thought it was a blow off top to twenty seven thirty, and then it came in it and kind of was. That, we said yeah, there. and then it consolidated there, and I figured, okay, blow off top consolidation. I'm gonna catch it for a little ride down to twenty, right? And <laughs> it hung out higher. there. And uh, it was a small position. And I said, OK, 25, 26 was the high close of the move. I said, if we close above that, I'm out. I mean, it, I, I didn't even wait for that. It closed at 25, 17 or 25, 20, like a couple yeah. days later. I yeah. said, to hell with it. And uh, I wish I would have been using the, uh, the consolidation to go long. But I, yeah. I thought, here's a consolidation period. Trend is up. I faded the trend, and boy, oh boy, I'm glad I got out of those things. I'm not gonna, not gonna try that again for a little while here in AMD. And uh, just giving you, looking at the monthlies here, I just want to give you 27.90. That was your high back in September of 2006. But your next monthly high doesn't come into 31.92, and that was in June of 2006. So you're saying so, this thing has room to 32 bucks? I mean, now. I mean, I'm just saying it based on the monthlies. I mean, yeah. that, that just based on that. And then I also, you just mentioned, you know, the Facebook there a little bit. We were talking about the uh, Barry Diller. That thing is, uh, that thing's sitting on a cliff here. It's completely that, out of favor right now. Yep. They yep. had, that was a pretty good news announcement they had last night. So they're going to get, you know, Instagram selling some stuff on there. Spence, do you have that? Because uh, I saw that headline oh, yeah. go by and it got a pop on it. It popped over 50 cents, but it's so out of favor. They just don't care right now. This uh, What is hot is hot. What's not is not. Facebook is the opposite of hot here. It is not hot. And it doesn't even matter. That was a decent he headline. That's, that's good you know, news. Saying, and yeah. a smart move. Even Bank of America was giving them props for it, you know, getting into e-commerce here. Um, I think, you know, if the market if this was in favor, the stock could be up on this news, but it's not in favor. So they just sell on anything. Do you have the headlines? Yeah, through? yeah. The news is that Instagram is developing a uh, standalone shopping app, which uh, if you follow this space at all, you know that a lot of e-commerce, a ton of e-commerce is taking place now on Instagram. So they're going to build out uh, a, a separate shopping app specifically. Uh, I guess it's a, I guess you could say combines Instagram with Amazon to an extent. But uh, that, that is good news because that's that's where the that's where the industry is going. It's smart. It's smart. And that's going to be another revenue source for them. So, you know, when it does turn, you know, this is going to help their fundamentals, but, and it's going to help their bottom line and their top line. But that being said, right now, stock is out of favor and it doesn't even matter. Uh, Shopify is down on this news. If you're wondering why SHOP is down two bucks, it got hit immediately when they came out with this news on Facebook. So that's why it's trading down here. But again, it's a story. Well, it's, it's not really hot. It's kind of sitting in the middle of nowhere. So I don't know if I'm necessarily buying the pullback on this or not, but we know B BTFD, that strategy seems to work more than it doesn't. Hey, Spencer, we'll, uh, we'll let you take the lead here with a little bit of earnings. Uh, what stock oh, wow. would you like to take? All right, let's at? start with uh, Workday. 
WDAY reporting uh, yesterday after the bell. Their Q2 adjusted EPS, 31 cents, was a five cent beat on the estimate. 26 cents was that. Sales, 671 for $663 million. So beats on the top and bottom line for Workday. They're also raising their sales guidance for the fiscal year. Uh, there, what well, is the number they're raising it by? Let's see. I don't have the number, but it is a raise. Their Q3 subscription sales guidance coming in at around six hundred and ten million dollars. Uh, subscription revenue growth uh, for the fiscal year of thirty one percent year over year. Decent quarter. Victim of running way up way too much into the report for the entire month of August. It was basically straight up from one hundred twenty five dollars to one hundred and fifty seven. So price to perfection. I guess it wasn't perfect enough the quarter. That's why it's trading down. We have precedents here. CRM reported last week, which had pretty good numbers as well. It dipped six, seven bucks on its report and they bought it right back. It's only two bucks off its all time high. I think the same thing's probably going to happen here. There's probably going to be the buy the dippers and WDAY. I don't know if it's going to bounce back immediately today, but it seems like three, four days later, you look at these things and they tend to get their losses back. So you're getting a small dip of 3% here in the pre-market, but there's probably BTF deers licking their chops. Uh, 149.10 is where they took it to on the number. Uh, just kind of hanging out in the 152 handle or just below it, down 478 at 151.91. Uh, basis, your daily charts really don't have anything at 49.10. You did have a 49.69 low. Uh, that was on the August 27th. So you'll see if you find some buyers at 150. Uh, after that, if you're looking for a little bit more on the short side or a little, perhaps a little bit safer a place to try along, your August 24th low was 147.50. Let's go restoration hardware from last night. And it's a similar story. A stock that ha- was 100 bucks in June, $160 as of two days ago. Somebody got nervous here into the end of the print yesterday. Oh, yeah. Uh, 151. But I tell you, on the initial number, this thing spiked too, Joel. So give us those numbers and the sellers came in. Well, they were very, very good. Q2 EPS, $2.49 versus a buck 75 cent estimate. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sales, 640 for $660 million. So a miss on that number, but a mixed. So mixed Q2 numbers, but raising their Q3, Q4, and fiscal year guidance. The fiscal year EPS guidance was raised. Uh, from six dollars thirty four cents on the low end of the range, raised to seven dollars thirty five cents. So raised a dollar on the fiscal year EPS guidance. Q three EPS guidance also raised. I mentioned guidance raised across the board. It's trading up almost eighteen dollars on the initial headline on the initial spike. It lasted for about five minutes and then it turned around and gave it all back and went red. Uh, was a high Joel like one sixty eight or something? Yeah, <laughs> higher than that one sixty nine. 169 and they turned around and they just slammed it and i literally looked at that and i was like whoa awesome you know report here for restoration hardware and they're up solid i looked at five minutes later it's like oh my goodness it's red so (laughs) incredible how those sellers can come in sometimes and just knock her down and now you're at 143 so it's been a wild ride here after hours for restoration hardware shareholders those insiders who thought that they had a report that was blowing it out or scratching their heads here this morning as the stock is trained down eight bucks but again it's all about expectations coming in. And sometimes when those expectations are too high, uh, even when they beat and they actually, you know, seem like they blow it away, sometimes it's still not good enough. Uh, pre, I mentioned that pre-market high. They took it down all the way to 138.18 on that same bracket. So 21-point move. Just hanging out here at 144. Definitely someone says, I want out. 145 is your area of resistance here. That's been your high since the after hours, uh, you know, since uh, about just after six o'clock, closer to seven o'clock. So that's where uh, that issue finds resistance. If you do come back, I look at that pre-market low as a probably good, pretty good place to bring in a short uh, 138.79 little confluence there. That was your August 8th low. Under that, you're looking for a little bit more 136.87. That was your August 7th low. And then one report from this morning will be done earnings. So it's or obviously we're out of the heart of earnings season here. We're right at the very end of it. Uh, we're still getting a couple of retailers. So with Vera, Vera Bradley, it seems like there has to be a retailer up 20% every day. I mean, really, when you look at this, if it's not going to be restoration hardware, it had to be VRA, right? <laughs> I guess so. So here VRA, 
I guess you should have just bought it last night after Restoration Hardware was down because every day we have a retailer up 20%. So it's up 15, probably going up 20. And that's a little bit of a joke, but a little bit of seriousness all at the same time because it seems like every single day we do have that 20% up retailer. Spencer, give us the results. And they were good again. Q2 EPS, 26 cents for us, a 16 cent estimate sales in line at $113 million. They're raising the fiscal year EPS guidance uh, from 40 cents on the low end of the range to 55 cents. Uh, so a 15 cent raise on the fiscal year guidance for uh, 49 cents was the estimate there. Q3 EPS guidance coming in in line. Q3 sales guidance, a higher uh, fiscal year sales guidance in line. But big fiscal year EPS raise. Big pop. I'm not fading it simply because it's only up 14 percent. And they go up 20, Joel. See, what do you I, think of that strategy? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just applied to this earnings season, but uh, you know what I've been talking about. It seems like every day we, we joke about it. There's a like retail that's up 20%. And when there's only one reporting today, I guess it had to be the one. <laughs> uh, and we are really close to, I'll just give you one level on the upside, 1695. That's your pre-market high. Still trading at 1640. So you backed off that $17 level. I had to go out to September of 2016, a two-year high at 1720. I would keep an eye on that as a potential target. And then uh, the other target, 1784, was, was your high in May of that same year. So you did find some sellers in the 17 handle. Haven't quite reached it yet. Is 1695 is your pre-market high. All right, so this market is all about what's hot is hot and what's not is not. We've been talking about that. Ran a scan there yesterday. 82 tech stocks I had making new 52-week highs. So despite, you know, not a great tape yesterday overall, there's obviously a lot of stocks that are weak. There's a ton of stocks that are just unbelievably relentless here. Going to give you a few of those names. Not saying they're going to go higher or lower. I'm just going to show you what is strong here. So let's just go through. I wrote down about 15 of them. EGHT, and this was on a technology scanner. So I hope all these are tech stocks. You know, maybe some of them aren't, but I don't know all of these companies. I just ran, you know, from NASDAQ and ran tech stock, uh, our technology sector and ran it from there. Uh, but EGHT is one. That uh, 2320 is starting to break out. I'll fly through these, Joel, and then you can see if there's any charts that you really Okay, like. go. I mean, they all look straight up. ACXM. We've got EVBG. So Edward, Victor, Boy, George. Uh, that's straight up there. GoDaddy. Everyone knows this one. GDDY. So there's a name there that's just uh, breaking out and looking like it's going to break out here again. Intuit is another one. INTU. That's looking like a breakout here potential as well. We've got Grubhub, G-R-U-B. That's rounded now and starting to look like itching to go here too. V-E-E-V, -E -E so which is Viva Systems. That's just been a rocket ship, but it's consolidated a little bit. And now it looks like it's kind of inching to go up there again. One we haven't saw in here for a while, and this is not a new 52-week high. I don't know why this fell in the scanner, but it's Sarepta. It did break out to a new one-month high yesterday, and that's getting above the 140, and that's an interesting setup as well. And then we also had uh, another one coming. I, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I changed the scanner at the end of it because these ones are different. So, yeah, I think I was just looking, and I moved it just to stocks that had actually moved up over the last week. Uh, Yelpster. Uh, Yelp is uh, looking like a cup and handle there too. So a lot of interesting tech setups here. Um, I mean, if you're just still going to play the game of what's hot is hot, what's not is not, these ones are hot. Yeah. Uh, and I, I mean, I, I flipped through the charts on these. I mean, the only thing is if you have a target and that's where you want to be, stick with the target. Also, uh, shorting, you know, not recommended coming from me. That's pretty good advice. Also, <laughs> shorting the rocket ships. Whole it's numbers. A tough game. Yeah, whole numbers. And if you're if you're looking for an out, I mean, I, I know Dennis, you're not a huge fan of uh, of selling calls on these things because obviously, if you like would have sold calls in any of these pot stocks, you got your stock called away. Uh, but maybe wait for consolidation. Like you know, AMD had to move up and had a consolidation. People like me thought it was a consolidation to break the trend. But what it was, it was a consolidation of the current trend to move higher. So what consolidation. About GoDaddy? What about the GoDaddy then? Okay. Because this one had the move, GDDY moved up from 73 bucks to 83 bucks, or uh, just in a, about a week and a half, or $82. There, now we've had three, four days of work. This one sets up just for that, Joel. Looks like it's consolidation to me to potentially break out here. Um, and if you take, you know, and technicians like to, you know, everything looks symmetrical. So you take that, you know, seven point move and you say, I'm going to attack another seven points. That could bring us to 90 bucks on this thing. I mean, the trend is absolutely different. The stock has been straight up. 
Um, obviously, you know, if the market goes to turn and goes south, and you know, it's not the best market right now because it was kind of weak at the morning yesterday. We are in September. It's weak, uh, and you got That's why I have all these plays. You got to be very cautious. The market turns around and really starts to go south. These things will get hit the hardest. But I mean, you just look at these charts and you think, okay, well, I get a little pullback maybe here with the overall market this morning. If the market holds up, I think these ones are going to continue to run. If the market holds up. 82.05 on that was your high from yesterday. Seller lurking at the $82 level, 81.95. That was your four day high. Um, one thing to look at too on these, and obviously AMD, we'll go back to that great example. You know, crazy volume. Like that move yesterday in AMD was just blowout volume uh, from 65 from million. Four. <laughs> yeah, 190 million. So, man, new longs just piling in there. So, uh, the thing about GoDaddy, you know, if you get a, you know, a nice move through 82 uh, with a lot of volume, uh, I would look for that $90 level. And uh, it doesn't make any difference in Danica Patrick. I mean, did she ever even get second in a race or third in a race? I mean, what was her... Uh, she what was won. her best finish ever? She won stuff. She won stuff? She won. She was, she, yeah, she won stuff. She won major stuff. She had like a 10-year career. She had to have won something. Mm, okay. I'll believe you, Spencer. <laughs> the odds I got are... another one for you here. Um, this is one that I followed for a while, and I, I rode this one from $4 up to six fifty. dollars cool. um, I sold half the position up near the highs, and then I sold the rest of it at five fifty, dollars which was just a terrible call. Ended up going down. I didn't want to take it through earnings. It went down to 5 bucks. It's Glue Mobile, G-L-U-U. The stock has been straight up since its report here now, and it's actually looking consolidating like it wants to go higher here again as well. So kicking myself that I did not hold on to at least a few shares of this one. Um, but what do you think? Consolidation station here for Glue Mobile. Yeah. Yep. I mean, if you can start taking out those highs of seven seventy five, you can start talking like eight, and then you can start talking about eight fifty. I mean, the stock has been really hot as well. Okay, yeah, uh, a couple highs at the same area seven seventy five, seven seventy two, seven eighty, and the end seven seventy four. So busted in. I mean, you closed right up in this area too. This has been man. This is uh, trade range dot com here from uh, man from seven forty to seven eighty. Of the last five sessions. Great, great point here. Nice consolidation here. See if you can blow away the $8 level. 827. Uh, add a few other stocks to my list uh, just to go and look at here. So we did a breakout filter, and what's hot is hot. We were really talking about a lot of hot stocks. I like shorting stocks too. And I'll tell you, one chart I like right now is LRCX, and it's not that I like it long. This actually looks like it's setting up to go lower to me Ooh, um, yeah. again what's hot is hot this looks like it's sitting on the edge of cliff though lrcx and if you look at applied materials it looks like it's sitting on a cliff here too so what's not is not applied materials and lrcx are the opposite of hot and both of these stocks look like they are ready to fall off a cliff so i uh, like both these plays from the short side uh spencer uh danica patrick she won a race in japan but from 2002 to 2018, she had zero wins, zero top fives, <laughs> and seven top tens. I, I also was doing some side Googling, and I found that she, <laughs> she won one race in the, in the IndyCar series in 2005. You guys don't listen. All right. All right. You guys NASCAR. are Googling I'm while I'm trying I'm to I'm sorry. Get my she, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, you're NASCAR. right. You're right. That was NASCAR record. Yeah. Okay. She, she, anyways, won, she won one what race. Do you yeah, think of, anyways, my father in law says that all the time. Anyways, LRCX, what do you think of this chart? I think that you concentrated on the low of the move there. Uh, we are trading down 39 cents, double bottom. There's no such thing as a triple bottom. Uh, so split those two lows. One, oh boy, you're five bucks away from it. 166.32. 166.97. So those are the actual lows of the move, and uh, you know, just sitting above it and not getting away from it. And you don't want to hang out too long either at the tops or the bottoms of the charts. They usually end up blowing through them. And Applied I materials, just, which is totally related to it, it's actually sitting on the lows here. AMAC got down and actually made a new low of the move at 42.04. This looks like it wants to fall to me as well. Yeah, and uh, 42, yep, that was yesterday's low, 42.04. Rebounded on the close, uh, biggest volume day since July 18th, so people are throwing in the towel on that one. Uh, take a look. There, in, there is good support. I'd be looking, uh, well, 43.87, or we're below that, 41.94. 
That was your August low from last year. We have, are about to take that out. I don't see anything until under $41. Just look out for the three monthly lows, 40.85, 40.79, 40.98. I think you'll get a bounce there. Like the first time, uh, we'll see what happens, see if any news accompanies uh, that stock. s and continuing to uh, leak here, uh, down 8.75, 89.50. Uh, folks, keep a real close eye on 28.85. Even that is your pre market low. 85.50 was Tuesday's low. I'm looking for a nine point drop to 76.75 if we breach that level. No support. Just next print. Boom, 80.76. But you know that never happened. So 8.30, uh, Dennis, any imbalances here on this? Uh, Same ones. Call? Same ones. It seems like every day. Square is a buy and balance of 60,000 shares. Market's down. Square don't care. Honey Badger stock that it is is trading up only 10 cents, but green on a heavy red day is impressive here this early in the morning. So Square continues to try to climb up and I don't know, it just looks like it wants to go to 100 bucks eventually. I don't know if it's going to go straight there, but man, the stock has been incredible. Alibaba, you want to talk about hot stocks that are not hot? Alibaba and all of your Chinese stocks are ice cold here once again. 91,000 shares to sell in Alibaba here this morning. It's trading down another $3. It's going to test that low of 165. In my opinion, it's going to test that low of 165.39 from August the 15th. And I mean, every spike in all of these China oh. stocks has just been a selling opportunity. So again, it goes back to buying the dips in stocks that are uptrends and selling the rips that in stocks that are in downtrends. That is what is working. And that is what continues to work. If you were selling the rip there after the earnings reports on Alibaba, you were rewarded here a week and a half later because it is right down back at the lows. Yeah. Um, and not only that, you can look at all the other ones, the EEM, if you want to look at the emerging markets. That had a nice lift, a nice little relief rally from 41 up to 44. Where are we? Right back down here at 41. China is absolutely hated. Maybe it's because of Trump. Maybe it's because you know growth is slowing. Maybe it's a lot of different things, but you can't argue with the tape. We don't care about the reasons. We just identify what is hot is hot. And EEM and your Chinese stocks are definitely not. Uh, lower the move in Baba, 165.39. We're trading down 276. So, ooh, gotta go another $2, but keep an eye on that level. Uh, just wanted to mention, I mean, Spencer, I don't know if you heard the news on uh, JD.com. Uh, but the, uh, I did. I believe the I, founder I did. of the company got, I did. I, and I'm not, I'm just reporting the news here, was arrested in Minnesota on possible sexual assault uh, charges. Holy moly, they tarred and feathered that stock yesterday. They're Continue. tarring it more today. Yeah. Joel, yeah. Yeah. another dollar thirty. Joel, I had internet where I was. <laughs> you realize that. I can still keep up with current events. Northern Michigan isn't that far. It's not like Canada. It's not like I'm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> JD right now is in a free fall. It's yeah. just in a free fall. And I'm trying to look. And we talked about this yesterday on the show saying the big run up from uh, January into April and in 27 into February in 2017 when it went from 25 to 30 bucks. And I said yesterday, I was like, you know what? There's not much in there really until 25. Well, here we are. We're two points lower here now from that point at 28. I'm still going to say if I was short this thing, I think my target is 25 bucks. Uh, two monthly lows from December and January last year, 25 and a quarter and 25.58. So not, not sure if we're going to see that today. No, uh, not today. You're, you're going to be in this for a while. It's, but it's a big move already. It's down 4.28%. Okay, now, and there will be relief pops. There are always going to be a little, nothing goes straight down, nothing goes straight up. But man, the trend is not your friend in these stocks either. Spinner pointing out too, it's not only, you know, just Chinese stocks. Uh, a good stock, and I actually was talking to my buddy last night about this one, is Win Resorts. I mean, these casino stocks are starting to get absolutely annihilated as well. Not even starting. They've been annihilated. I mean, Wynn had all the problems, obviously, with Steve Wynn back in early summer. And they kind of shrugged it off. And they bought the stock back to a new all-time high, over 200 bucks. And since then, it's been straight down. We're now at $142 here on Win. Las Vegas Sands is just as ugly. It was $83 back in June. It's 64 bucks here today. MGM has just been the dog of them all. It really didn't even get the rally that the other ones did. Uh, well, actually, I guess it did. I, I take that back. It did get up to 38 bucks. Uh, but I mean, it got hit in August. It looks like it's going to retest those lows here, too. These casino stocks are in a world of hurt. Uh, actually, the old time high in that is uh, 248 and change. So, uh, yeah, a uh, win. Win. Oh, win. Yeah. 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 Sorry. So it wasn't a new all time high. I didn't quite get there. But that was, um, that was like back from like 2000 before the financial crisis, right? 
Yeah. Uh, it, no, it was after that. In 2014, uh, they made the all-time high, 248.31. There was a stock that I wanted to... Oh, I don't want to start a big political discussion here. I just want to talk about the trading in Nike well, yesterday. Oh, we got Alan Brockstein coming on. We Let's do. bring yeah, in get, Alan. Get Alan. You can talk about Nike after. All right. We'll, yep. we'll take a quick break and we'll grab Alan Brockstein. The, uh, the 420 investor will be right back with Alan. All right, welcome back, everyone. We're joined now by Alan Brockstein, the 420 investor. He's up on our screen right now. How's it going this morning, Alan? It's going great. A little bit quieter today than yesterday, which was insane. Quieter? Quieter with, uh, with uh, TLRY, uh, trading way up, crying, all these issues. Um, just a couple things. I mean, I, I know you filed these stocks and you filed a ton of stocks in the industry. Um, just a general, I mean, these stocks, I mean, how much... Weed or people are going to have to smoke in Canada to to satisfy these these valuations. Yeah. So look, I, I've been uh, kind of amazed by this. If you would have told me that Tilray was going to be testing 80, 90, 100, I would have laughed. But uh, here's the reality. Uh, all of a sudden, it's OK for U.S. investors to invest in stocks, but they have a very limited pool. Uh, a lot of people would prefer to trade on the Nasdaq or the New York Stock Exchange. There's just really three companies that are uh, you know truly cannabis companies. They're all Canadian LPs. And so these three companies are just being uh, stolen by the traders, I would say. So there's not any connection at all to the fundamentals. With that said, there is a, a positive fundamental story going on. It's just hard to tie the valuation in to where we are now. So I'm just kind of watching this. Uh, it, it's, it's funny. I'm having flashbacks to uh, you know 1999 or something like that. But I, I don't think this will end like that, by the way. But just with these specific issues and this very short-term time frame, it's pretty scary. All right, so if investors are in this, if you don't think it's going to end like 1999, so they just like, just forget about it. Put it in their portfolios and forget about it. And, uh, you know, I don't know if there's options on these things, but uh, so you're you're just saying just uh, hold on tight, right? And well, so, so uh, I, let the I, market I be, take you out. Yeah, so I'd be careful with those three stocks. They're definitely, there's a short squeeze going on. Uh, till rate especially, very tight float. The only shares that are trading are, the shares that were sold in the IPO, which is just you know very small amount of the whole company. So the overall valuation is not tied to the liquidity at all. As a matter of fact, by my calculation, more than 100% of the float traded yesterday. It's just, like I said, it's been hijacked by the traders. But with that said, uh, uh, it's gonna be published this morning. I, you know, These words, uh, I know you guys may laugh, but I, I, I pinned something on uh, Leafly, which is a kind of a cannabis industry uh, media site. And it's uh, the title was something like, this time is different. And those are dangerous words, I know, right? But uh, 
this time is different. And I would suggest to people that you take a look at the U.S. companies. That's what this whole canopy growth uh, constellation deal was about, for instance. And uh, there are a lot of other companies besides canopy growth, Kronos and Tilray. Alan, what about the Canadian ones? Because you have a lot of investors, and they've had some big pops here too. I mean, Afria went from basically ten bucks to nineteen. I'm looking at it right. here this morning. Um, these, you know, maybe you know, uh, some of them aren't quite as extreme as like the CRON or the Tilray, but they've had pretty yeah. good moves here too. Um, is this just uh, you know getting hyped now in Canada as well? It's kind of like they're playing catch up over there to what's happening in the U.S. Have the traders hijacked the Canadian ones here too, or, no, or no, so, what are your thoughts so, here on the Canadian ones? Yeah. So what was going on in Canada? And I, I've been very negative, and it just turned on a dime uh, on August fifteenth when uh, Constellation plowed. Uh, it's, it still hasn't closed yet, but they're pending on. Uh, you know, it's a pending deal. Five billion dollars Canadian into Canopy, and to put that in perspective, five billion dollars is probably about as much money as the whole sector had raised in the prior 12 months, which is a way more money than people would have thought would have been raised. So uh, it's a very positive story overall in Canada, not driven by just the Canadian fundamentals, but a, really a global story. And that global story is actually becoming more uh, comprehensive to include the United States potentially. It's, it's very difficult to understand exactly what's going on, but taking a, a company like Aurora, for example, which is one of the largest LPs there, they are, they are spinning off their U.S. operations, which were basically nil. But there's a new company that's going to raise capital, invest in the United States. And Aurora has a call option to basically buy that company. So I, I think these companies like Afrin, Aurora, and Canopy Growth have figured out how maybe they can plant some seeds in the United States, at least, if not to be you know direct operators right now. So, But back to the whole Canadian story, you know, there were some delays there. Uh, the market was overly frothy uh, back in January. So we were in a correction. It turned on the dime. Uh, there's a lot of talk now, you know, Diageo may be buying somebody. I, I don't think it'll be a, a purchase. It'll be a, a strategic uh, partnership probably, but still big pharma, other alcohol companies. Everybody's kind of realizing if you want to be in the global cannabis game, these Canadian LPs are a great opportunity. So uh, so it's a bounce from very depressed levels. You, you mentioned Afria. It's still down, uh, you know, good 20%, more than 20% from its highs earlier this year. Uh, a few of the companies in Canada have made new highs, but uh, and some of them are testing their highs. Uh, Alan, we are exactly five weeks away from the big day in Canada where we're going to get uh, nationwide legalization uh, across the border. Is yeah. What, how, like, how does that upcoming catalyst fit into what we've seen in the last week or two? Yeah, so, you know, the time is kind of weird. I, I told my subscribers before uh, the Scanopy Growth Constellation deal, you know, we'd probably start to see some excitement uh, right after Labor Day, so yesterday. And so, yeah, of course, we were seeing it, but we've seen a lot already. I think uh, my own analysis is that the, uh, this whole event is very well known. Everybody knows what you're talking about, October 17th. The unfortunate part is what they don't know is it's not going to be that great, uh, unfortunately. So it, it's it's great in the long run. And in the short run, the results of legalization on the uh, top line and bottom line are not going to be very good. And the reason for that is, uh, first of all, there's not a lot of supply. The inventories just aren't there to support uh, robust sales from day one. Uh, more importantly, there, there isn't a lot of distribution. The, the whole uh, province of Ontario, the largest one, when you're sitting in, Dennis, I think. You know, yep. Are you in Detroit or in? Uh, no, uh, no, I'm not in Detroit. I'm, I'm actually still in Ontario here right there now. There you go. So you're sitting in Ontario. It is the strangest thing. Ontario kind of, uh, you know, uh, Doug Ford took over the province and uh, came to what's a better outcome, which is that they're going to allow private retailers. Before that, it was just going to be uh, like the LCBO, basically, and there were only going to be 25 stores. Now there's going to be zero stores except for the online one. And I, I just don't think online is going to be very productive in the early days of this program. It'll be a great feature in the long run once uh, the new consumers that enter the market kind of understand the branding and the products and all that. But uh, So not a lot of supply, not a lot of points of distribution, and the wrong product set. No vaporizers or no vape pens, I should say, you know, extracted products, no edibles. So basically, Canada is very conservative in its, its initial approach. Don't expect huge things from day one. Uh, it's very exciting, but I think it'll, there's a trading rally uh, for sure, but it, it'll likely peter out, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not going to say October 18th, but uh, there's bigger, bigger things than Canada. 
Uh, just uh, real quickly, I just want to ask you about, uh, you know, two stocks, uh, you know, these tobacco stocks. I mean, Brita, you know, BTI. Oh, my gosh. This thing has just gotten smoked. I saw Philip Morris has just uh, been under pressure here. I mean, are these stocks going to be continue to be under pressure until maybe they make a, a transition or make a similar purchase? Or is it yeah. just over? Cigarette smoking is just going to be gone. And uh, well, I won't say gone, but uh, it's certainly declining. And any comments on those stocks? So I, I don't really follow that industry. Uh, you know, I'm well aware when you think of the big industries that, that are looking to cross over, uh, that is the one of them. I would call it a distant third. I think the way to think about tobacco is not that there's a substitution effect. It really has very little to do with cannabis. I mean, rolling papers maybe for some, some people, but uh, but what they, what it is, is it's a, it's, a, it's a dead industry for the most part. And one that knows how to deal with regulation. So there's no growth, lots of regulation, looking for a new opportunity. There was one company, Alliance One International, that uh, came into the space and they bought uh, majority control of a Canadian LP, a small one. Uh, I just saw the other day, I don't think it's been reported anywhere, but Universal, uh, which has, I think, a two billion market cap, something like that. They said, nope, we're not going to touch the cannabis industry. So it's kind of interesting. These companies, you know, they have a lot of cash. They have a lot to lose. If for some reason, Donald Trump you know, gets mad at them and uh, says, hey, you're a uh, illegal money launderer. So, uh, I don't know that we're going to see that. Uh, we, it's the least likely area. I think we're going to see what's going to surprise people is that we'll see a big pharmaceutical company enter the space shortly, in my opinion. And uh, and Scott's Miracle Grow SMG, I remember that getting a pop, getting up to a hundred and ten dollars yep. on all the hype about uh, you know marijuana cultivation and stuff, and they had just beat that stock here, uh, yep. trading at seventy five dollars. Was that just you know? Was that just hype and it's really not going to be part of the uh, of the growth in the sector or is this stock that's on your radar? All right. So it's it's, it's not exactly on my radar. It's, it's on the radar to be on my radar. And by that, I mean, uh, they have done a bunch of acquisitions. I'll explain kind of what I think the problem is, but they've done a bunch of acquisitions to build a company that truly is a major, major company uh, serving the cannabis industry. But it's buried. I always like to say it's the wrong kind of grass. You know, you know the, the rest of their business focused on Bermuda grass and whatever is is, is a lot bigger <laughs> than the one focused on cannabis. So to me, it doesn't it's not enough of a pure play to really have interest. Uh, so coming at this from the from a very high level, because I, I don't spend a lot of time on it. I will say the perception is that they a they overpaid for what they bought and B, the execution has been just horrible. I mean, it, really bad. And they've tried to blame it on kind of like California legalizing and fires in California and all this other stuff. But the reality is they blew it. And, uh, you know, if you go back and read the transcript, it's pretty clear that this has been uh, self-inflicted gunshot wounds. All right. Alan Brockstein is the author of The 420 Investor. Alan, thanks so much for the time today. I really appreciate it and have a good one. All right. You guys have a great September. All right. Thanks, Alan. All right, 848 now. We uh, want to get back to the markets here. Um, there's a couple of things that we wanted to discuss still. I know Dennis had a chart, and then, uh, Joel, you were going to bring up Nike before we switched over to uh, to Alan. So why don't you, you want to do Nike first? Yeah, yeah, I do. And uh, I think today is an important day uh, for Nike. Uh, it got hit yesterday, and... Uh, Holding in there, we're trading down 10 cents at 79.50. 79 even was the low. Uh, not much to back, but I think today's an important day. If it's going to hold that low, I'm looking for it to bounce back, but there could be some more continued sign. I'll tell you, when, when I look at this, and I know this is really a stretch, and don't quote me on this, but it's like, did they want their stock to go down? I mean, I, initially, knowing that, sitting in a boardroom, doing that, you know that there's going to be some kind of immediate reaction to that. Um, yeah. Whether or not it's going to have a long-term effect, I mean, they sell stuff a lot other places than the United States. So I don't know, Dennis, you were kind of looking for it to rebound. Big volume day yesterday. Uh, you're dipping your toe in the water yet. Uh, I'm watching that 79 level. I mean, it did rebound yesterday and then it immediately sold, you know, or gave some of it back. But I mean, it opened right at the very low at $79 on the kisser. 
10 minutes later it was 81 so it had your, your big bounce there and then it found its consolidation i think it might retest at 79 let's see what it does there can it hold that 79 level i mean the stock is still an overall uptrend the market is not helping a lot of stocks here there's certain stocks that just ignore the market this is probably not one of them so i mean if this market continues to look a little bit heavier and you know all i'm saying is there's been a couple of days here where the market isn't going up i mean we're so used to the market going up every day it feels like a bear market when the market doesn't go up I mean, uh, anyway, so we're down here a little bit. We are in September. There is some nervous nallies out here on some stuff. I think we retest 79. Let's see what it does. Can it hold the 79? If it can, then you have the potential for a double bottom, and then you can maybe try to work your know, ways back up into that gap area again. So that's, you know, how I'm going to be playing it, is looking at the 79 and, and maybe trying to play it off that. If it breaches it, then I would be out. So, you know, trading is all about having defined stops, defined outs, and 79 would be my out on this one. And uh, boy, oh boy, that trading range from 50 to 60 that lasted for a couple years, or actually it was like 50 to, yeah, 50 to 60 hung in there for a good part of 16, 17, finally broke out. So we'll see what the sentiment is. I just, you know, be aware it was a big, big volume day uh, in Nike, nearly 19 million shares traded. Uh few ratings that are interesting here. Actually, the analysts were quieter than I thought they would be, but I was two of note. Um, Anthem, first of all, A-N-T-M, catching an upgrade from Morgan Stanley. They put a big $368 Woo! price target on this stock. It is not traded much in the pre-market here. It's traded 100 shares. It's bid up at $266.75, um, $268. Uh, fifth, or it's traded a couple odd lots at 268. I think you could test the all-time highs here today. Again, the tape is not helping it here. Um, is this all-time highs? Let me just before I say that here, I believe it is. So we're looking 268, yep. uh, yeah, 268.13. I, mean, yeah. I think we could take that out here today. Maybe give a shot at 270. Uh, now, as we're talking there, somebody just went and bought 269.50. So I hope people aren't just, you know, saying I think it could go up there and then they come in here with our market orders and buying. And I mean, it's all about working the trade there a bit too. Somebody just bought up six bucks. I hadn't even traded at all on 500 shares. So just be careful when we start talking about something. You just don't go and hit the buy button right away. But anyways, pretty big coincidence there that 10, 10 seconds after I just mentioned that it just traded its first lot of the day up 500 shares at 69.50. Anyways, and it was a retail trader because it was FINRA. So just be careful, you know, you always got to work the trades a little bit. And when we say something, you know, might go somewhere, it doesn't mean it's immediately going to go there. It could be working. I think the stock uh, could take out those highs here today, though. <laughs> well, you already did, Dennis. You just stopped. Well, I, <laughs> as guys we're talking about it. I mean, I don't know if somebody listened to the show just bought 500 shares. It's fine. No, no. I don't so. Maybe not. I think it's, it's some institution that listens to the show. Some institutions that listens to the show. Yeah, because it's 500 shares of a $269 stock. You ain't no retail <laughs> trader doing that, man. Well, yeah. I'm agree. there's some big retail traders out there, but that's a big position. That's over what? 269, 100 shares. What are we talking about there? What's that math, Joel? 100 grand? Uh, it's more than that. More than 100 shares. 500 shares. 500 shares. 500 man. times 300. Come on, Dennis. Uh, Qualcomm. What is this thing going to stop going up here? I don't know. I'm in it and I almost feel like selling it because it went up so much here in the last little while. But I stuck it in the long term portfolio and it's about time horizon. I'm trying not to look at it as it continues to climb up. I'm actually up pretty good on this thing now. Uh, we'll give a shout out again to Sean Udall here. This was his pick of the year. It's been straight up since he has said that. Um, I have it too because of Sean. I bought it back in the day and I was playing a little bit with, you know, back in the day from when I was obviously at the 82 potential takeout. Oh. BGO, but I still stuck with it because of Sean. So thanks, Sean. Um, it's back up here at 70. I don't know where, you know, I think, you know, it's a little bit overdone to chase it here now, but valuation is still pretty decent on this thing. And the trend is your friend. Yeah. Uh, uh, Broadcom is willing to pay 80, 82 for that. And uh, it got hit. I mean, it got, it got caught in that whole NXPI, um, uh, that helped it when they yeah. were done with the NXPI and they tried to do their own buyback and they just tried to do it. And we talked about this in the show. They did a Dutch offering and they only got half the stock they wanted. There to you get. go. That's why. It's I think up. there's a lot. Of, I think they're looking at it and saying we still got another five bill here. Are we going to do another mm -hmm. Dutch offering and try to get the stock again? Or are we going to do it in a different way? Are we going to do something because they didn't get it all? So that's why the stock's almost got a floor. I feel like down there right now at sixty-seven and a half. Where, where I believe that was the price where it went. So Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. Well, I, I remember when they came out and uh, uh, announced the Dutch auction. I mean, you were adamant. You said, 
man, if there's anything you want to do to get your stock higher, it's if that's your intention to get it higher, if it's intention to pay more, I think, I think you end up paying more that way, the way you're doing it. But if your whole intention is just to get your stock price up, the Dutch auction is a very efficient way of doing it because the way it's structured, the ARBs come in and they basically, you know, you give that range and they will buy the bottom of the range all day. And then it tenders and it ends up going off at the top of the tender in this case. I mean, and then they don't get it all because everybody doesn't tender it. I mean, that's just a clean way to get your price higher if that's really what you want to do. Okay, did, uh, did we cover all the ratings here? You mentioned Anthem. Tyson Foods downgraded at Argus here. Uh, that was significant. That stock has had a run. The food stocks are completely out of favor here now, once again. I mean, I got out on that Kraft Heinz on that I candle. Know. Yeah, and maybe it's luck, but I, like I said, when I see Kraft Heinz going up 8% one day, I ring the register, and that was the absolute top. And it's been straight down here ever since. I have not rebought the shares. It's in a free fall here now. So I'm going to just wait until I see the stop stock. I'll at least try to bottom. Maybe look at the April lows, 54.11, but it is ugly. Tyson Foods has not really sold off here, which is why it's interesting with the downgrade here today. It has held up. Oh, but look it, at that chart, though. It's got a lot look of consolidation it. here, too. It takes out the 62, which it looks like it's probably going to do in this downgrade here today. There's some room on the downside here, and the trend is not your friend overall. I mean, the recent trend in August is your friend, but the overall trend in Tyson Foods in, the, in 2018 is a lot lower. I mean, we're $84 in December of 2017, 62 here now. Food stock's still out of favor. Oh, man, listen to the one last six lows in this. 62.48, 62.37, 62.43, 2.35, 2.26, 2.43. Six lows in the same area. Now you're taking that out after a bump up, major resistance. People trying to sell on, uh, you know, sell on the rally that sixty three dollar area. Love to see this back up at sixty two thirty, sixty two forty. Little gap fill for a lower risk short here, but uh, looks like this one uh, has some meat on the bone here on the downside. Uh, Dennis, I just looked at. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to bring you back to that chart you wanted to discuss from the top of the show. About yeah, let's do that. Okay. So can we I, show it? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna pull it up. So right uh, one of my followers and, and and one of my friends, Fernando Oliveira, sent me and and tweeted out and he cc'd me on it so I could see it. Um, I'll just read you the tweet and actually uh, Spencer will show it to you the chart. He says I calculated my PNL for almost every trade I did since 2014. It's probably a lot of work. Broken down by the hour of the day, and he said it confirms what um what myself and Joel have been saying and insisting on that the real money is made at the open and the close. And if you look at these two bars, he's showing the money that he's made. And, and the majority of his money is made in the nine o'clock bar and the 15 and the three o'clock bar. So basically at the open, at the close, I would imagine Fernando, and I've never done this in my own charting. I would imagine if I charted my PL, it would look very much the same. I would imagine my opening bar would be a little bit bigger though. Like I think I make over half of my money on the open and the rest of the day. And, and I've always said between 11 and two, I, I usually don't even trade those hours. I trade, you know, pre-market, I trade uh, the open very heavily. And then I take the middle of the day off and uh, off, you know, take a long extended lunch or go do something else. Um, and then, you know, I come back for the close where I make money again. But sometimes intraday is just a lot of chop in the middle of the day and you get chopped up and it makes it difficult trading. So Fernando, if you're listening, I'm not surprised at all by this chart. Thank you for sending uh, me this. Uh, this just confirms, you know, that I'm happy that I'm trading the hours that I am because I'd imagine my chart looks the same. And Dennis, uh, but also like you would have, I mean, it's much different for you. It would be impossible for you to do that because, you know, sometimes when you put positions on, you know, I mean, I'm overnight. They, yeah. So, you know, there's different, yeah. there's different stuff. I'm getting out of all the stuff on the open. It's when I'm booking a lot of the profits, but you know, I put positions on at the open too. I do sympathy plays, um, you know, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. What I would say is still at the open, the risk is much higher there too. So when yeah. you get a loser, sometimes you can get caught. Let's take, you know, for example, um, and, and just another shout out to Fernando Oliveira, just his book, uh, Traders of the New Era. I'm in that book as well. And I think that was, you know, I read, I read his book. You know, I, I think I was 50 pages of it um, where, where he interviewed me, but there was nine other traders in there. Jeff Goldman, who we've had on the show, was one of them as well. And I learned a lot just from, you know, the other traders in that book too. So Fernando did a great job writing that book, especially since English isn't even his first language. So I thought he just did an excellent job, you know, writing a book in English when it's not even his first language. So shout out Fernando, uh, Traders of the New Era is his book. Uh, but I was just going to say, uh, and just take you through an opening trade yesterday. So we talked about the hurricane stuff yesterday. 
And I was like, well, maybe the hurricane trade is going to go on. And I bought Lowe's. I got Lowe's. I tried to buy Home Depot, Lowe's, and GNRC. And I was trying to short the reinsurers. We talked about that on the show. I was trying to do those on the opening print. Well, I'll tell you, uh, the, the Lowe's worked very well because it opened down and went straight up. Home Depot, I did not get, but it would have worked too. But GNRC was just a mess. It did not work at all on the open. I got in that trade and it was crowded. You could feel it right off the hop. And I bought the opening ticket, 55.43. All I took was heat. I was never up in the trade. I immediately, you know, the stock immediately goes down like 55 and a quarter. I'm looking at a 55 bit. It's widespread. It's a 30 cents wide. I'm like, okay, well, you know, you sell 100 shares of the thing and it knocks it down 30 cents. I mean, and, you know, obviously I have a lot more than 100 shares. So it's very difficult. If you're on the wrong side, it's hard to get out. I finally was able to wiggle out of some of the 54.75, but you know, what can you do? You know, you just got to try to work them out as best you can. Sometimes you got to wait a few minutes till the liquidity comes in. It will come in after the first few minutes, but you know, there's some good trades and some bad trades. Sometimes you're on the right side. Sometimes you're on the wrong side, but in that opening bracket, you can make money or you can lose money. The lows, I made money very quickly. It opened at the very low of the day, I believe right near, you can see that the bar there at the open, I think it opened like a 108.10 or 108.20. It was straight up to one oh like 890 in basically seconds. And it continued to run throughout the day. Now, you know, Scalper Blood and me, I'm out fairly early, but um, it just goes to show you this big movement in that opening bar. And that kind of coincides with the candle that Fernando was showing us. Okay, Spencer, uh, nine o'clock here. Spoos are climbing back uh, into 28.90 handle, down eight bucks here. Uh, keeping an eye on 92.75, that's mid range on the session. Big numbers, all kinds of numbers uh, grouping up at 2,900 if that comes into a rally mode. And then a big number on the downside. Uh, yesterday's low, 85.50, your free market low, 85. A uh, little bit of a holiday week uh, with the Jewish holidays coming on Monday and Tuesday, a little bit quieter trading. Uh, we'll see if the, uh, uh, you know, if the traders can get this back. Don, not expecting a big up move until we get back and close above 2,900. All right, it's going to do it for us today, folks. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you missed any part of it, you can catch our podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn, or Google Play, or just watch the show on Benzinga's YouTube channel. Thanks to our guest, Alan Brockstein. Thanks to everyone in our chats, premarket.benzinga.com and youtube.com slash Benzinga TV. want to remind you all that all the information from our show is for informational purposes only and not meant to be investing advice. Have a good day, folks. Hope you join us again on Thursday.